Right, day four. It's now got your squat and move day. This is a peanut. It's two lacrosse balls together. So if you don't want to go and buy, actually buy a peanut and you've got two lacrosse balls or two hard rubber balls, get yourself some gaffer tape. Take those two balls together and hey presto, you have your own homemade peanut mobility ball. Now, the way this is organised is the two balls are going to be sitting on the erector spinal muscles, those big columns of muscle either side of the spine. The middle bit, that's where the bony bits are going to sit, so the bit that sticks out your back, the spinous process. We're going to place this underneath the lower back, like so. So it's above your pelvis, it's not onto the bone. The first point of contact is the first bit of fleshy bit that you feel just above the pelvis. You're going to let yourself sink onto the ball, so it's going to go into the fleshy bits. And then we're just going to rock our legs from side to side. As you rock to the left, the peanut pushes into the left erector spinae. As you push to the right, the peanut pushes into the right erector spinae. Once you've done that for a few repetitions, roll the ball up a little bit, find the next fleshy bit, and then repeat the same process. Now uh, you can do this all the way through your lumbar spine, just to the bottom of the rib cage. So don't go into the thoracic spine, you don't need to go as high as that. It doesn't matter if you do, but generally speaking, what we're going to try and do with your lumbars is reduce the tightness that a lot of people experience in those erectors. Now if you're in the situation where you find yourself, you've done a, a couple of warm-up sets and you've got those wicked back pumps and you can't really do anything else because your back's so pumped you physically can't like, lift the bar, get your pins out, do those things side to side and you should find that will take the back pump down enough that you'll be able to do your next set. Now back pumps, two reasons that those can occur. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this on here, I'm sure I am, because we're all, uh, we know there's a lot of enhanced athletes out there. Oxys, so if you're running oxys, they have a tendency to cause terrible back pumps. So it might be the performance enhancing supplements you're taking, or what you find, and this is much more common, is when people have back injuries, so there's an underlying back problem, the back pump occurs because your brain is trying to protect your back. So if you've had these problems for a while, the back pumps are getting worse, you find it's actually limiting your ability to be able to squat, this would be the time then to get someone to take a look at your back. And that's either me, via the online portal, or face to face, or if you've already got your own healthcare provider, your own physio, osteopath, chiropractor, get yourself booked in with them and get that lower back looked at. So moving downstream now, so we've mobilised your lower back, we've talked a little bit about back pumps and what they can mean. We're now going to move into the hips and from a squat perspective we need to be able to externally rotate the hips under load because that external rotation causes something at the back called a force closure mechanism. So at the back of your pelvis you've got this big flat bone called the sacrum. When you externally rotate your femurs you basically take those two halves of the pelvis and you squash those together so that the sacrum and the pelvis now fits into a really strong articulating unit. When we're not externally rotated, what you tend to find happens is you've got some instability in those joints and that's a recipe for back pain. So external rotation of the hip is a really important movement as we talked about in the shoulder. Any ball and socket joints, shoulder, hip, they need to have that external rotation ability because that's how you create stability in those overhead or those loaded positions. So this is your pigeon stretch. We are going to get ourselves into a position where our front leg is bent at 90 degrees, our back leg is out straight behind us, and then we're going to simply drop down into a position where our body comes over the front leg, and we feel a nice deep stretch around the back of the glutes and the back of the hip socket. Now, you can just camp out here, but you know me, I like to hunt around and find, to find those tight bits to make sure it's really effective. So you can start by moving more into that position, or you can start by moving more into that position. And what you'll find that will do is it will highlight those bits where you've got movement restrictions. 
When you find a movement restriction, which might be over here, just spend a few seconds in that position, wait for the tension to release before you come back into the middle, push yourself back up into an upright position and transition onto the other side. So that's piece number two, that is your pigeon stretch. Right, so your final piece for your squat and carry day is something we've already done before. It's your goblet squat and your hip mobilization at the bottom of the hole. Now, I like this one so much. We've already used this in previous blocks of training, but I think this is a really nice way to both activate, open up your hips, and prepare you for your squat movements. So with a weight of your choice, we're gonna go into a squat position, feet wherever you feel comfortable, and then we're gonna come down into a squat and we're gonna spend a little bit of time just hunting out the corners of your hips. We go back into your squat and repeat the same process. So trying to sit right back on the heels, the weight in front is there to counterbalance, so you can actually spend some time hunting out the corners, loosen off the tight bits in your ankles and hips. I would do one set of six to eight reps, and that is the final piece for your squat, and is it carry or move? Squat and carry, you're done, into your warm up. You're out of breath, aren't you? No.